Good day ladies and gentlemen and once again back together uh, looking at uh, the chemistry uh, paper November 2021 uh, just to analyze and go through those uh, uh, questions. Uh, of course for those of you who have already written this exam this is no way to stress you out just the way just for us to analyze what has happened and um, um, Obviously, uh, for those who are still going to write the IEB exam, a great way to revise, okay? Right, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you are part of the family. Just uh, hit that subscribe button. And, uh, you know, for those who will be watching this video somewhere in the future, uh, we just hope that you'll find it valuable and um, helpful as well. All right, so let's get into question two. And in this case, we're looking at organic chemistry. Uh, just apologies, uh, you know, obviously I'm uh, uh, taking this video whilst we're experiencing what we call load shedding, um, you know, for our international audience. <laughs> uh, you know, load shedding is uh, when there's no electricity in South Africa. Uh, so if if uh, perhaps the lighting does change, it's because I'm using the natural light, the sun. Uh, OK, so I'm trying as much as possible uh, to shoot this using uh, natural light. So please forgive me if uh, things change as the video uh, uh, continues. But I do hope you'll be able to grasp the content nonetheless. All right. So let's uh, get right into it. OK, so we given all of these organic compounds there. Uh, from A, B, C, D to H uh, in this case. And the first thing that they say define the term unsaturated compounds. So in organic uh, chemistry, remember that uh, these are hydrocarbons um, uh, in this case that have either a double bond or a triple bond. Okay, or you can say that uh, uh, they have a, uh, a, they do not have the maximum number uh, of hydrogens around each carbon okay uh, if there is another definition please uh, you're more than welcome to uh, just put it in the comments uh, so that we can all benefit from it I would really really appreciate that right now let's look at the next question they say to us write down uh, the letter that represents the unsaturated uh, compound remember that when you talk unsaturated or saturated we are looking only at hydrocarbons um, so in this case if I look at this um, this is a hydrocarbon and that's another hydrocarbon um, and yeah that's got chlorines there that's butanol yeah so we only have two hydrocarbons in that case uh, which is um, uh, B and E in that case yeah uh, let me just make sure yeah so B and E so in that case it would mean that um, uh, the ones that are unsaturated okay would be B it has a double bond okay uh, but if I look at uh, E as well okay so this is C2H4 that's a molecular formula of an alkene right so in that case, uh, I would say both B and E are actually uh, uh, unsaturated. Okay, uh, so 2.2.1, so that would be letters B and E. Okay, so let's go to the next one. They say, name the functional group of compound C. So for compound C, if we look at it there, uh, you've got an oxygen okay so uh, that looks like it's got a C double bond O uh, because that carbon doesn't have a hydrogen in it of course uh, in that case it can only be C double bond O there so definitely that would be a, a, a ketone right um, so what is the functional group of ketones okay we say that it's the carbonyl ion right or you can say the carbonyl group all right so a functional group that would be all right uh, so the next one 2.2.3 they say write down the letters that represent the chain isomer of compound c okay so when i look at uh, a chain isomer so it means if we're looking for a chain isomer we're also looking for something that belongs to the same homologous series, isn't it? Okay, 
uh, in this case, um, so the chain isomer, uh, so we're looking for a ketone as well. Uh, that looks like F. Um, so let's see how many carbons. One, two, three, four here. This would be methyl butane one, uh, sorry, uh, no, it's five actually. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. So this is methyl butane one own. It's a ketone. So definitely it would be F. Okay. So 2.2.3. Uh, um, our answer there is F. And then uh, as we look at 2.2.4, okay, they say write down the IUPAC name of compound G. Okay, so when I look at compound G, I've got a chlorine at carbon number two. Uh, I've got a chloride at carbon number one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so uh, if I number from that side, it's two and five as well. Okay, so um, let's see. And from that side, our um, our uh, side chain in this case would be at carbon number four. But when I number from that side, it would be carbon number three. So remember, what we try to do is to take uh, a combination, a lesser combination of numbers. So in that case, and uh, by the way, if you don't understand what I'm saying, please go and watch our um, playlist on uh, organic chemistry and you'll find out exactly what I mean by that. Okay, so this would be at carbon number two and this would be at carbon number five, but it's two and five going that way as well. So it wouldn't matter in terms of the chlorines, but it does matter when it comes to that, um, uh, you know, that uh, side chain there. Okay, so in this case, this would be carbon number one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'd say at we've got carbon number two and carbon number five, we've got chloros there. So that's two comma five. Remember, because I've got two of the same things, then I say dichloro. Okay, so this is dichloro. And then I've got at carbon number three, I've got a methyl. And remember to put the hyphen okay uh, every time you've got a number and a letter okay in this case so that's three methyl and in this case that's going to be one two three four five six so that's going to be hexane okay it's all single bonds all right so that would be hexane that would be the name of our um uh you know of compound g right and then um they say uh, the name uh, write down the general formula of the homologous series to which compound e belongs okay so when i look at compound e that's c2h4 that's an alkene and so in this case uh the name of the oh, oh they said the general formula uh, to the homologous series so the general formula of alkenes remember that's going to be cn h to n and you can see that it does follow that general formula uh, in that case okay right now let's go to 2.3 okay okay um the functional uh, uh okay the term functional isomers they say define the term functional isomers uh, remember uh, we say these are organic compounds with the same molecular formula uh, but have got uh, different functional groups, okay, or belong, uh, uh, yeah, have got two different functional groups, or uh, uh, belong to two different homologous series, okay? So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't write that one down. Uh, of course, you should know it. Uh, they say for compound A, write down the, uh, the homologous series to which it belongs. So, compound A, it's got a C double bond O with an OH. Definitely that should be a carboxylic acid. Okay. So uh, in that case, sorry, that's 2.4.1. Okay. So that's a, uh, that belongs to the group called carboxylic acids. Okay. And 2.4.2, .2, they say write down the structural formula. Uh, of its functional isomer okay now remember in this case uh, um, uh, you know carboxylic acids um, 
functional isomers of um, esters, right? So in that case, uh, we can have, they said, uh, write down uh, the, the structural formula. So uh, what would be an ester that would kind of look the same as, uh, or rather in this case, that would have the same formula? Should have two carbons in it, okay? Because it's an ester, there must be C double bond O. Um, okay, so in this case, all right, so that's what the structural formula uh, of that ester would look like. Okay, uh, even if this was on that side, uh, it would still be the same thing. So two carbons, two oxygens, four hydrogens, and it's exactly the same number as that one. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. All right, so 2.5, okay, as we swiftly move along, uh, this is quite quick uh, that we are answering this. Um, so they say to us compound D um, undergoes a dehydration reaction, okay? Uh, so compound D uh, would be this one here, okay? And if you look at compound D, it's got one oxygen there. Okay, it's got C2H6, so that uh, is definitely an alcohol. Uh, if you wanted to draw it out, you know, uh, you'd see that that definitely should be an alcohol there. So I'll put the OH over there, okay, so C2H6, so you've got uh, 5 and 6 and with 1 oxygen over there. Right, so 2.5.1 says uh, write down the IUPAC name of compound D. Okay, so definitely compound D should be ethanol, right? So in that case, this should be ethanol. Uh, we didn't need to specify the number because whether you put the OH here or here, it's still at carbon number 1. So in that case, it would still be the same thing, right? So 2.5.2, uh, uh, I did apologize, you know, for uh, the poor lighting there. Remember, I did say that I'm using natural light. So hopefully uh, you're still able to, uh, you know, see there. Okay, so uh, the next one says write down uh, the letter that represents the yeah, um, a product of this reaction. Okay, um, so remember they told us that we are now going to dehydrate. So meaning that once we dehydrate, we're going to remove that H and OH. Okay, so we end up with an alkene, right? Uh, and in that case, that alkene should have two carbons. So they say write down the letter that represents the product. So in this case, it would definitely be E. And please keep in mind when they say name, when they say letter, okay, those become very important because even if you get it right, if you didn't follow the instructions of the examiner, obviously that would be marked incorrect. Okay, right. So in that case, uh, the last question, they say write down the name or formula of the inorganic reactant that is used uh, in this reaction. Okay, so um, if I wanted to dehydrate alcohols, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, alcohols, I would definitely use sulfuric acid. So in that case, uh, the inorganic, uh, yeah, reactant would be H2SO4. All right, uh, so in that case, um, that would be our marks there. Okay, and yeah, essentially that is how the cookie crumbles. That is uh, our question two. And I hope that you were able to get all of these marks. Uh, I think they were just given for free in this case. Uh, um, obviously, we'll continue to uh, look at the other questions. And I still appeal to you, ladies and gents, please try and tell as many as possible, you know, about our, uh, our, you know, our channel. Uh, you know, so that they can also benefit uh, just like you are benefiting. All right, um, with that poor lighting there, uh, hopefully to, we'll see each other next time when we discuss question three. And uh, yeah, as we continue to analyze this paper, I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.